Okay, so this is the new adventure. I um, did a demo already on how to do sea anemone. Um, I'm just going to be pulling out some colors. Now, it's a, a series of just one stroke overlapping each other, and they all are all random. What gives them distance is then going back in and bringing out the color, uh, which will make one overlap more than the other. And that's just um, a thing that takes a lot of time. So if I come in here like this, it puts this one behind or in front of those other ones. And it's just a matter of looking to see which one you want in front or in back. I'm not going to go too much into this because I already did a demonstration on how to do that in another video on how to do a coral. Um, I am going to work on a little fun thing. I'm thinking uh, <laughs> this is um, in my mind when I started doing this. I first thought that came into my head was the movie, <laughs> Disney movie. And um, in my head, it took a different direction, which often that does. And I was just thinking, instead of finding Nemo, um, the thought came into my head was um, <laughs> wing, wingman. So they are actually guarding the little clownfish. So there's always little things in my work that's kind of strange. But that's just... a strange mind. Now I'll probably put some coral, bright color right here. <clears throat> um, this may take a little bit more work and there's going to be one kind of um, staring right at you. For me, sometimes the um, the ability to do a line in one stroke um, now, when I was teaching my students, we would practice just the one stroke. Of course, they hated that because they wanted to draw something. Um, and even though I try to tell them that it's an important technique, that gives you the ability to do a very clean, clean and crisp line. And for a lot of things, not just doing a fish, but just about everything that I do deals with, in some part, a straight line that's one stroke, like whether I'm doing jellyfish or um, it could be anything. Um, even these sea anemone here, it's, it, it's a curved line, but it's all one stroke. And you can see all these one stroke individuals. Um, it just makes a really crisp line if you start thinking about making a straight line, um, you get nervous, which is understandable, and um, it's going to definitely look wobbly, and uh, it's not going to look right. I mean, you can go back and do the layers like what I'm doing, you just stay within the lines, but it's that first in initial line that... Uh, makes the difference. 
Now, this is not going to be one kind of crazy, outstanding um, technique. Um, it's just the way I would do these fish. Now, um, because I... Um, am kind of a scientific illustrator. This would be for um, beginning people. Now the way I did this is um, I didn't directly draw on this. I had a tissue paper and I did all the <clears throat> different variations and sizes on that. Um, when that was decided um, then I followed the line in the back of the tissue paper, placed it on the board, and went over it, and it transferred that image onto the board. Not very dark, but enough for me to, to go over. Um, so that's just a helpful hint there of how I would do this. Um, just a little trick. Now, that tissue paper is essential in my work. Um, sometimes I'm going to have multiple um, if I'm going to do like fish, I'm going to have a lot of the same type of fish. And then instead of trying to redo every single fish, I'm going to use that tissue paper. That already, I already worked out all the bugs and um, it's good to go. And I'll, now the reason I'm showing you this is mainly because um, this is far away and it's not gonna require any detail. Uh, if it was closer up like this one, uh, then you can see, at, oh, hopefully you can see this, I'm not sure, let me do a little quick check. Let me see if I can come into it a little bit more. Okay, so you can see that there's layers and layers on this one. And then went in there and pulled out the color for the highlight coming in. Um, then, and this is not finished. This is just the process of adding more detail. Now the one that's up there that I was doing the demo on, um, that, um, because it's in the distance, you wouldn't be able to see anything anyway. So, um, yeah, that's why I did that. Just to show, that's one, a beginner's way of doing fish. Um, as you can see, you can see the little teeny highlights in the tail. Um, now remember, I, I kind of draw really tiny. So th this is almost, you know, like two or three, possibly three quarters. Um, that little one that's like uh, the clownfish, that one little one I was doing, it's almost in the same size as this quarter. Matter of fact, if I put this quarter over that other one, uh, it would cover the whole thing except a little partial part of the tail. Um, but let me kind of go back into this, I guess. Because it's a hard thing to understand. Um, um, so when I did this, um, I had a yellow ochre and a little bit of uh, green sap green and mixed it together so you have this greenish tint with kind of putting it a little bit further back behind this one. And I just did random, you know, strokes overlapped each other, but you wouldn't know which one's in front and back until I went in there and I pulled out the color. Um, I'm just going to give you a little example. I, I wasn't planning on doing this too much. You can see I'm just pulling it out. Now, if I go over this one, this one now is in front of this one. 
and that's how I did this one. So if I come in, yeah, let's see a little kind of a little area right there. Now you could obviously see that this one is in front of all these other ones, and that's just the tedious work of a scientific illustrator or my technique of how I do watercolors. Um, I'm not, I'm not in a speeding contest. You know, I'm not trying to zap these things out in 20 minutes just to demonstrate I can do it. I can do a painting in. 15 minutes I could do a painting you know and it would look okay um, but that's not my intent um, I want to show there's a lot of people that can already do that already and that's not who I'm trying to demonstrate to I'm trying to dem demonstrate to the people that um, would like to do add more detail to their work but don't have the knowledge or how to do that now since I can't show the whole paintings that from start to finish and I'm not going to use that sped up hyperloop thing because that just drives me nuts um, I will do a technique and all, a lot of my paintings, and it may be two or three certain techniques that I use um, for certain things. So if I'm going to do a butterfly, you'll see a few demonstrations on how to do a butterfly and the techniques I use. If I'm going to do uh, my favorite, one of my favorite subjects is Bryce Canyon. There's going to be a variety of different techniques how to do rocks. Um, you're not going to learn all my techniques in one painting. Um, unfortunately, that's just the way it works. Um, I will give demonstrations on a few techniques from one painting to the next. Um, but when you start looking at my work, you can see the same techniques overlapping. And so it's it's nothing new. It's the same technique. Um, I do explain one of my techniques is that scribble or 20 cups of coffee technique. Now that I use for almost everything. So it's that moving real quick and that's the way I did coral in a previous um, explanation video. And that random movement of my hand I know it doesn't make sense but it adds to the realism um, and I can't emphasize enough that what I was talking about that that one stroke thing um, if you have one stroke that goes like this and when you do that for coral it, it blends in and it moves in which I call um, a, the randomness of nature so for me I think nature is random and when I was making di dioramas for the museum you know I used to make the maquettes so they're small little models of kind of what it's gonna look like um, it's not exactly what it's gonna look like um, it's gonna be very close because if you try to get and follow a pattern so closely it will look stiff and if you keep things loose especially when you're arranging plants and rocks and, and you start thinking about it too much and you try to use that you know okay this rock needs to be next to this one and it's got to be a big one next to a little one and I'm gonna put something here and you start thinking about it too much it looks not natural I know it sounds weird but when you start throwing things in and you just by accident how things fall into place like the way it would in nature you know when a rock slide comes down they're not kind of totally in line in a pattern when they get to the bottom it's just this random kind of rock movement that 
This is what nature looks like. Now this is the part that takes a long time because now it's the process of looking at all these little teeny lines, looking for something I can change or alter, uh, make a highlight, blend something out. Um, but you can see there's a there's a nice wave pattern, like perhaps there it, it's in water and the flow of the water is just making things go this way and this way, and some are going this way. The current's taking it, um, and like I said, it started off like random spaghetti thrown out, and by going in and out, <clears throat> it does give a better sense. Anyway, so I just wanted to give a little heads up of the direction I'm going. But probably the next time you see this, it'll be in the 90% finish because I'm going to do some more coral in here. Maybe do some a uh, little bit darker coral blue because this looks like coral in the distance. And then maybe a brighter coral thing in here. I, I'm still not sure what this is, will turn out, but it's it'll be either a horrible surprise or a pleasant surprise at the end of the day. Okay, so I'm going to, I did a lot more stuff, came into um, a lot of the fish, went into this, kind of reworked some of the sea anemone, uh, worked the fish more, went into this area and added some um, kind of coral, not, it's just the rough part of the coral, I'll go back and make detail, but I want to show kind of a little bit of a demonstration how I did this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some uh, yellow ochre and I'm just going to lay a foundation. Okay, so I'm just laying a foundation of color right now. I'm going to add some water too. Now the reason I'm adding water is I'm going to leave a direction that the colors can travel. So if I come in here and add some more darks, and now I come in, let's see, and I'll probably add maybe some purple, and let it bleed into this. I'm going to come in. and let it do its thing and travel on its own direction and you can see I'm just kind of being loose with the the direction And you can see when I just tap it, it kind of makes its own decision on where it's going to go and, and where is it going to travel. But all those little nice little things that are happening on the edges, the phrase, it will look more natural. Uh, now I can come back into this other little area and kind of just kind of play around with the possibilities let it travel let that let it travel now by doing these little wiggly things it gives the illusion of detail Now 
Now I can go a lot of different directions. So like I said, it's the illusion of detail. And this is that 20 cups of coffee um, technique I use a lot. Um, but and I could bleed into that. It helps with the edges. I still like the, the blending edges, but this also sharpens some of those little. And I don't have to do every single edge. I could also add a little couple of little teeny things in here. Just so it um, looks like there's a gathering of variety of coral. Anyway, so that's kind of the technique I'm using. I will in here so you can see the detail this fish still needs a lot more detail let me do some highlights on those um, so um, Again, 90% at this point. Hello, um, I'm Steve Melendres, a model maker, illustrator, scientific illustrator, sculptor, design after history museum in Los Angeles. Done a lot of different things, um, but I'm gonna be doing watercolor demonstrations of the techniques I've developed over the years. Um, and it's gonna go from a lot of different directions. And also I'm gonna be doing videos uh, I call them video post-its for my daughter. So a lot of stuff that I can leave to my daughter about her crazy dad. <laughs> so um, I'm taking a lot of different directions, but mainly three. Um, so anyway, that's my introduction that I'm going to attach to every thing I'm doing now. So I don't have to repeat this. Be careful out there.